Hey everybody, welcome to TYT Nation Interviews. I'm your host, uh, Jeff Waldorf, and I have a special guest with me today, uh, coming back to the show uh, after quite some time, and she's actually got uh, a very interesting race that's going on right now. Uh, I want to introduce you or reintroduce you to uh, Amy Valela. She is running in Nevada's 4th District, and uh, like I said, we've got to talk about the time in between uh, the time that you were on the show last time. So, but first of all, welcome back. It's Thanks for having you. me back again. It's really, really good to see you. Um, a lot of stuff happened. Uh, I want to congratulate you first, of course, on becoming a Justice Democrat. That is fantastic news. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very privileged to, to be on, uh, on that slate of candidates. So I'm very thrilled. Well, we're glad to see you there uh, with a lot of really talented um, and amazing candidates. Uh, you're definitely one of them, so that's big, big news. And again, congratulations. Thank you. So, all right. So one of the things that I want to talk to you about is your race, which has gotten even more interesting than it already was, if you can believe it, since the last time we spoke. So your race in Nevada is wide open. Um, your opponent, yeah. uh, Ruben, I still cannot say his name, uh, happened to get himself into a little bit of trouble and is no longer running for re-election. Uh, he's not stepping down, but he's not running again, which means you are wide open. Yes, the race is wide open. Um, at this point, I'm the only Democrat that is in the race, um, but I'm sure there'll be others that will be joining the race, uh, Probably shortly. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that because, again, um, you're uh, an incredibly qualified candidate, at least from my experience. You're running on the right issues. Um, but I was wondering what the Democratic establishment is doing now that Rubin is no longer in the, way, in the race. I mean, have you had any sort of responses from them? Have they reached out uh, to you at all? Are they, you know, considering... Uh, getting behind you or what what's going on you know i think at this point the the race is still open i don't i've not seen any indications um uh, as of yet that um they're going to be backing any particular person so you know right now there's people that are um they're just still deciding whether or not they're going to enter there's a lot of names being thrown around um i i know for our district and for the state of nevada that it's very important that they have a candidate who is running on a progressive platform like myself, because that is what's going to help bring unity back. You know, I'm able to attract a lot of the people that um, have been Dem Exeters or who are very disenfranchised with the political system right now. And we're in a, a, a purple district that flips back and forth. It's really going to take someone like who has my, my type of candidacy to really ignite you know, um, the constituents to get out, get get involved in, in the voting process again and really stand behind, you know, an, another candidate. Um, so I'm very excited. I think that, you know, we're going to continue on our race as we've been doing, remaining really focused on the issues because that's what people are really interested in. You know, since even in the past six months, um, it's, it's really been a change uh, in how people are paying attention. People are really seeing the effects in the worst kind of way from not being awoke in the political process and being sure, you know, that they that they understand who's representing them and the issues that are going to really affect their lives. Right. Have you been seeing a lot of uh, interest in your campaign? For example, a lot of people wanting to come and volunteer or have been looking into uh, what your campaign is about, where you're standing on the issues. Uh, have you been able to do any uh, sort of like town halls or, or meetings or anything like that or campaign events? Uh, and have you been seeing a lot of interest when it comes to those? Definitely. Um, the interest has really grown since, since you know, this seat has opened up. You know, we've had over 3,000 donors uh, in this quarter alone. Um, and it's – and also people in Nevada. They It's now an open race where they're more – willing um, to look at, at another candidate 
Um, and they're really hearing what I'm standing for, and I'm seeing that growth grow leaps and bounds uh, since it's now an open seat. So I'm, I'm very excited. I'm excited really at the opportunity of being able to talk about the issues and getting people engaged back in that process because it is so important with all the the things that we know are happening in Congress and in the Senate right now, we really need to get some warriors in Congress yeah. and Senate elected uh, in order to start combating and not just resisting, because that's not enough alone, but actually starting to change the dialogue that's happening um, on the ground as well as, as in the House and in the Senate. Yeah, so it's really interesting to see how this, how the entire dynamic of the race has actually changed. And, and I know not to get too horse race politics, but I think this is kind of an important part of where your campaign is at right now. Just the, the dynamic of here you were um, going against an incumbent who had a lot of advantages. You told me last time that he was endorsed by, you know, Harry Reid, backed by Harry Reid and establishment Democrats. And so he would have had all the different advantages that an incumbent campaign had had including uh money you know cash um right. and you're not taking any corporate or PAC money that's why you're a justice democrat uh which is of course awesome that's exactly what we want to see in in any political campaign not just if you're a justice democrat or not but in any political right. campaign we want to make sure that the, can the the candidates are taking uh no corporate or PAC money and actually getting funded by the people and, uh, you know, I, I'm assuming you've been seeing, uh, act, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, ground on, you've been gaining a lot of ground on that level as well when it comes to actually funding your campaign. And, and I do later want to talk about uh, a fundraising uh, push that you're actually making as well, your sure. campaign. But uh, as far as the dynamic has changed, it's completely open. And that presents a very rare and excellent opportunity for, for for a new campaign, somebody new to come in. And um, so what, what are you doing to uh, try to capitalize on this on this very unique opportunity? You know, I'm really um, getting out there and getting involved um, and making sure that my voice is being heard, not only, you know, nationally, but also locally. Um, we're getting our volunteer base set up. Uh, we're getting ready to start hitting the ground in January. Um, we're really excited about that. Um, this district is very large, so we've got a lot of work ahead of us on that. Um, we are reaching out, you know, not only to volunteers, but to organizations and, and other uh, community um, leaders, making sure that, you know, we're, they're knowing that we're in this race, we're still in this race. Um, and, you know, also it looks like the local media now is starting to show a little bit of attention. Um, it was very amazing to see all the outpouring when they were ignoring my race 100% completely. Yeah. Um, where I was like, wait a minute, there is somebody running in the district already since uh, July. So, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, it's really, it's really been amazing how it's turning around. Um, but you know, of course, uh, you know, as as I am a you know grassroots candidate, they're not going to take us as seriously, regardless. Um, mm -hmm as other candidates because we are so grassroots and we're not going, you know, we don't have the backing of, you know, large corporations and super PACs. So it's really important that, you know, people come out and support these grassroots candidates, not only, you know, being their voice on social media, amplifying their message, sharing, liking, uh, retweeting, but also, you know, volunteering and donating. You know, we have a really big push right now to end this quarter um, and so that we can show that we are viable, and we are in this race, and we are going to be a force to be reckoned with. So uh, what, something that's interesting, uh, too, uh, that happened uh, in between since we last talked um, is the Me Too movement. And that's actually what knocked yes. uh, Ruben out of the race. I, I, I want to give your thoughts on that and how that's actually changing the discourse of, of America. And actually, because right. um, like, I see it as, as it's it's a big culture change. It's a culture shift that's been ending a lot of politicians' careers, a lot of media personalities' careers, um, movie stuff, you know, movie directors, Harvey Weinstein, etc. And so, it, you know, let, let's talk about the, the impact that's having on, you know, culture and, and, and politics in general. 
Right. So, you know, there is definitely um, accountability now for actions. You know, we're seeing that finally women feel safe to talk about uh, their happens that we're in that in that era right now you know women for a very long time and I know throughout my my career are often put in very toxic situations and 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 sometimes they're having to choose between what they feel safe for them or healthy and providing for their their families and and many times these are single mothers who really don't have any other alternative so you know I'm very disheartened that we have someone representing Nevada um, that is displaying this kind of behavior. Um, we have a lot of issues to be working on um, that a lot of Nevadans are hurting and really needed to have, uh, you know, attention put to those issues in Congress. And it's very unfortunate that that's what the focus has been in this point. And, and you know, to be quite honest, I think it's about time that we have more women in office. Um, we need more women in office that are experiencing a lot of the issues that are facing Americans today, such as raising families, you know, trying to raise a family, you know, by yourself or, you know, go through and, and figure out how to navigate the professional world with little support system mm -hmm. in place. So this is really an opportune time for us to get more women in office that, uh, you know, understand the stakes and are willing to, to go to bat. And, uh, and and make sure that these things are addressed in Congress and in the Senate. Right. And, and health care, obviously, is, is the big issue. Medicare for all. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely your big issue. Now, interestingly enough, you know the tax plan that just passed today. Yes. Effectively Unfortunately. Ends, yeah. It, it effectively ends the ACA. Um, and, and, and it does yes. that by eliminating the individual mandate. Now, people in the House, I mean... I haven't heard of anybody speaking up, any of the Democrats in the House speaking out against this tax plan as it was being debated. It sailed right through the House of Representatives. Um, well, and we have, you know, what we had Senator Corker in the Senate saying that, you know, he didn't understand, he didn't read it, and he, and he said he would take an accountant to understand the bill. Well, isn't it, it supposed opinion, to be simpler? If you don't understand the bill, um, you shouldn't be signing it, A. Um, and, you know, I'm a CFO, so I'll be more than happy to break it down for him that this is going to hurt, you know, working class families across this country, you know, and it's going to increase the wealth of the top 1%. You know, we're talking about automatic cuts that will total, you know, around $136 billion. And some of those reductions are in, you know, agricultural uh, subsidies, you know, student loans military retirement, you know, not to mention the cuts to Medicaid, I mean, sorry, Medicare, um, that's going to affect our elderly and, and people with disabilities. This is an inhumane tax bill. It should not have gone through. Um, so I am very disheartened. And, you know, the people, the working class people are continuously being robbed to increase the wealth of the top 1%. And I feel like they should be screaming off at the top of the hill. You know what? We're not going to, you know, we're going to tell you exactly what's in this bill. They should have been out at their, you know, in their hometowns with their constituencies, explaining and, and rallying them up around, you know, making a really big outcry because this is going to affect millions and millions of, of Americans' lives and the working class. You know, and, and not only was it about the financial impact, but they were also putting things in there that, you know, will really hurt women's reproductive health rights. Um, they were putting everything they could in there to pretty much erase any progress that we have made in supporting you know, women, our elderly, our working families with their children. It's, it's really, to me, was um, disgusting what I saw happening. Uh, and, and, I, and again, this is why we really need to get people who are grassroots, who are people powered, who are not beholden to their donors or special interest and get them in office so that they are represented by people who are beholden to them. So that's really important. Yeah. Uh, just to note, Corker made $1.1 million off this. Right. So him and other members of Congress uh, that voted for this and the House bill actually had 
some even more egregious uh, pieces inside of it. Um, you know, so, maybe they ought to hire an accountant to explain the bills to them if they make that much. <laughs> they might need to. I mean, look, you we know? all know their their staffers basically will read some of the legislation and go, "Here's here's what our donors want inside of it. Go ahead and it's sign fine. it, vote for it, yeah. etc." And and that's the that's the thing you want to get rid of. That's the thing we all want to get rid of. Republicans even, uh, and that's the influence of money in politics. That's what this bill is all about. This is a giant. Right sloppy wet kiss to you know giant corporations and the wealthy uh and it hands over 1.5 to you know to almost two trillion dollars uh to to the rich and that's that's the unfunded portion yeah and it's a redistribution of the wealth and as you know the wealthier they get the more political power they obtain and then it generates even more wealth Mm -hmm. It's a vicious cycle. We have to break it. The American people have to stand up and say enough is enough. And that means getting really involved in more ways than you probably ever have been. Because it seems to me. Out there and volunteering for the candidates Mm -hmm. that are, you know, going to be beholden to them. Find out who they are in your district and supporting them even on a national level. It's going to take all of us. Exactly. And, and, And you need to have the right kind of politician that'll do that. And as far as I can tell, because of all the, you know, problems uh your former opponent uh was getting himself into even though he's in congress we didn't hear him speaking up about this about this tax bill uh that would definitely hurt nevadans we didn't hear him he wasn't doing anything he wasn't talking about it um i heard very few people in the house talking about this and you know uh if people choose to elect you would would you be out there saying, hey, wait a minute, this this bill is crap. Yes, you know, it's it's a disservice to the constituents completely. I, I, I am pretty much a fireball. I would be out there definitely raising concern, making sure that that the, my constituents as many across the the bear, you know, the, the, what's going on, what's happening, and also on the floor. You know, we need to be bold. I mean, it's it's we have been at a time where we're just constantly resisting. Um, we need to do more than that. We just we don't need to just vote no. We need to be boldly out there proclaiming that this bill is inhumane, making sure that we are messaging what's included in this bill and how it affects everyday American, and we need to make sure that messaging is in a, is messaged in a way that the majority can understand what you know what exactly you're talking about and what exactly it entails. And that, I think, is really the job of people who are representing, you know, um, in Congress and in the Senate. Yeah, and, and you've heard, heard me talk about uh, my problems with some of the Democrats there. Uh, now, Bernie Sanders, um, he was one of the, and, and he got together with, um, uh, you know, I'm blanking out in his name now, from Oregon, Ron Wyden. <laughs> um, he and Ron yeah. Wyden, it was awesome. Uh when the Senate was, was taking up the bill, they actually found something wrong with it because it had been so hastily rushed through that they're like, hey, wait a minute, hey, hey, wait a minute. this uh, violates the bird amendment, <laughs> the bird rule, okay. and you're going to have to send it back, and we're going to have to have the House re-vote on it. Because Bernie Sanders and, and Ron Wyden and, and real progressives, they're the only ones that are paying attention. You just well, pointed the out. Well, I think paying attention, too. Yeah. They want the bill. <laughs> well, I mean, they don't, but they don't know everything that's in it. All they know is what benefits them personally and their donors. They don't, they don't understand the right. impact of what this tax bill is actually going to have on the middle class and, and the working class. So, and, and, and that's the biggest problem here is, is, again, we don't have representation in the working class uh, or for the working class and middle class. We only have representation for the super, super rich. When I, I and it's 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 really unfortunate to say, but I feel like many of our representatives just do not care what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's almost as if it's a political game and a power game and a money game. You know, we need we definitely uh, need to clean house and uh, and and clean the Senate. We need to make sure that we are electing people at the beginning in 2018. And really gearing up for 2020, we need to have that system in place. The work starts now. 
It doesn't start, you know, at the end of this year or in 2020. It starts now. We have to be on the ground, you know, really working in communities to make sure that we have a blue wave, but not only a blue wave, but a blue wave of progressives across this country, true progressives that are going to fight, you know, for the working class, for our, our el the elderly, for people with disabilities, for LGBTQ communities, for people who are in people of color, women. There are so many issues right now that are adversely affecting these communities and not enough is being done to protect them. And we need to make start making changes now so that hopefully once we do get to 2020 and we can um, replace uh, number 45, uh, you know, we'll have that structure in place to start getting some real work done. And so this, it's, it's actually, it can, it's an exciting time that we have, we actually do have a chance. We have a lot of great groups out there really backing all of the progressive candidates, such as you were mentioning, Justice Democrats, brand new Congress, our revolution, progressive Democrats of America, you know, they're out there getting ready to help support and, um, and help mobilize, you know, uh, the, the communities to back all of these candidates that are willing to come out and speak boldly and, and, and run for office. So uh, aside from uh, one more question here, aside from Justice Democrats, are there any local Nevada groups uh, that are, are coming around to you and, and, and are trying to help you out as well? Uh, yeah, you know we've got we've got the local our uh, our revolution chapter has endorsed me. Um, the nationals not doing endorsements until January, so um, we're looking forward to hopefully um, getting that endorsement. There are a lot of local um, groups that are also you know I'm meeting with and and talking about how we can work together on these goals. You know I I think a lot of people don't realize how close we are on the issues. Um, because, you know, they only, they want to, they want to argue about, um, politics and all of the, the talk that goes back and forth about, you know, whether it's Hillary or Bernie or, but when we start talking about the issues, I really, there, I really find very little difference as far as if I ask somebody, for, for instance, do you feel that my daughter should have died from a lack of insurance? I have rarely found someone there are some actually, unfortunately, but unfortunately, um, yeah, 99 percent of the people I've spoken to, um, even people who supported Trump will say no. What I think is progressives, our challenge is to to not get so wrapped up into, you know, all of the, the, the hawks surrounding politics, but really push hard on the issues and have the American people understand that the progressive platform is the platform of the people. And so that's what I've been really working on with community groups here in Nevada um, and across, even, you know, and nationally, I've been really trying hard to concentrate on the issues to ensure that, you know, that we're being soft on the people and hard on the issues, as Nina Turner would say. Mm -hmm. So that, and sometimes it's hard. <laughs> it, it can be very hard to be soft on the people, but, you know, we have to keep that in mind that it's really a, just about showing the, you know, the constituents and, and, and just the everyday working class American that, you know, we, you, we might differ a little bit on how to get there, but when we really start talking about the issues, the people's platform, you know, and the platform of the Justice Democrats and, and the brand new Congress and our revolution, all of these platforms really speak to the, what's needed in our society today in America. So, so, so you're saying that you want to run on policy over politics what kind of politician does that are you sure you're a real politician <laughs> no you're you're I'm a real really person to, stick to the issues I, I i'm really just constantly talking about it you know and uh it, sometimes it can be challenging but i just you really have to just keep all the noise out and really just concentrate on what matters is that i always tell people as people are arguing about you know, a lot of things are really inconsequential to our everyday lives. What is really hits home with me and is true for me and, and in my soul is that I know every day that goes by, there are people that are losing their life, that are becoming homeless, that are, you know, suffering from discrimination, whether it's from racial or because you're in the, part of the LGBTQA society. You know, they are feeling the effects 
every day of our government and our leaders putting profit over people. That's the reality. And it breaks my heart. You know, I, I almost wish that we'd have election day tomorrow and I think it started the day after. <laughs> I'm ready to get in there and really try to, to make as much change as I possibly can and give my contribution back um, for all the people that have been fighting before us to get us to the point where we are now. I mean, even when you talk about something as health care, you know, it took years they've been re, re, representing this bill to Congress for years. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need. We need people that even if it doesn't look like it's going to pass right now, we need to be introducing bills now. We need to be doing it left and right and entering them and talking on them and messaging and putting it out before the people and, and creating that movement. That's what's going to create the change long term. And so, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, wow, well, your, your platform, I don't think that's going to be possible in the next two years. Probably not. But if we aren't fighting for it now, it never will become reality. If we're not talking about it now, it never gets into people's psyche that this is even possible. It's only by us talking about it and, and working to enter those bills into to Congress or into the Senate. That's where the real change begins. And it's a movement. So we have a lot of work and uh, it, it, it's exciting, but it's also there's a real cost to every day that goes by that we're not doing the work. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's about laying that foundation. Now, you talk about cost, right? Um, there's a personal cost to running for office. And, I, and, and, you know, you're obviously you're definitely aware of that personal cost. You can't exactly work when you're campaigning all the time. No. So no, I mean, just, just tell anybody, t tell everybody about like the personal cost, what it's like to, to actually run for office as a, as a real human being that's not backed by right. these gigantic super PACs where they pay for everything and you can just sit back and, you know, do your campaigning because right. again, you're a real person. You, you have, you have bills and you have things that you have to do. Yeah, tell us about that. <clears throat> Well, I can tell you that um, a lot of the Justice Democrats and brand new Congress members were, the first thing is they were primarying a, a sitting congressman or senator. Um, that in itself brings a whole nother wave of ridicule and animosity, you know, that you have to take on immediately. And it takes a lot of courage and boldness to say, you know, I am going to hold my representative accountable for the campaign that they run on, the issues that they ran on in their campaign. And I'm going to call them into account and make sure that they know that they owe the people that they are serving what they promised them when they ran. You know, that was the first piece. And that was really hard. Um, but, you know, there's also the piece where, yeah, I quit my job. You know, you don't spend a lot of time with your family. It's a huge um, personal sacrifice. But... You know, I knew when I was out in the community that it was not just about me, wasn't just about health care. There was a much bigger issue and a much bigger purpose. And, it, you know, I had to, to take that experience and I knew that, you know, to close my eyes and not do anything about it would be would make me an accomplice to what I was doing. And I was not going to allow Shalin's legacy to be me, you know, taking the easy route out. This is a much bigger purpose and a much bigger, you know, um, challenge uh, than I ever thought I'd be be engaging in. But it it feels good to be able to give back to this country and this community, and to be a part of this this momentous period of time. We really have, you know, a chance of making some real difference in this country. Yeah, and and I think this is I think this is our best chance. I mean, especially you. I mean, you've got an open race now, and and anything can happen. And you've got the momentum behind you, and and you've got the right platform, and you've got the Justice Democrats, uh, and you've got people like, uh, you know, like like I I I think you're doing a wonderful job, and I, I'd love to see you uh, win and 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 be a be a representative. You're not my representative, but I I would like to have a representative such as yourself. Um, well, it would be in a way. Everything I do. <laughs> that is true. Affects everybody in America. <laughs> you um, know, it's uh... Yeah. Uh, I, again, I, I love the work that you're doing, and, and, and I love the fact that you've, again, you're a regular person, and you saw something, you saw a problem that wanted to get fixed, 
and you're like, okay, uh, let's fix it. Let's, let's do the work. Let's get it done. Uh, and let's start helping people. Now, speaking of helping people, how can people help you? You know, we could use all the help we can get. We're at the end of the quarter right now, um, and we're getting ready to file our next set of FAC filings. And, the, you know, everyone is looking to see how viable I am. They're looking to see how much support I actually have. And we need to show them that, you know, progressives can raise money without, you know, being sold out and without going to large corporations or super PACs. So we need all the help we can. If you whatever don't whatever you can donate would be great. Um, if you go to justicedemocrats.com forward slash help Amy win, uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. You know, in addition, you know that money not only shows that we're viable, but right now we're trying to secure uh, you know a field organizer. Um, we have a huge district that we have to cover here in Nevada and CD4. So, um, and I definitely want to be able to pay a livable wage to the staff that are working on this campaign tirelessly. So, um, we could use any support you can give and, and not only financially, but, you know, because the media will not cover progressives as much as they do, um, you know, other candidates, we need, we need everyone to be our voice and, and to amplify our voice and by sharing, liking, following, tagging, you know, really helping us get the word out to the communities that we're in. There are a lot of just Democrats, you know, out there right now running as well as brand new Congress. And pretty soon there'll be our revolution candidates and PDA candidates. Make sure that, you know, not only are you doing it on a national level, but also for you know, supporting your local candidates as well. That's so important. Um, so again, you can visit us, you know, you can go and visit uh, justicedemocrats.com forward slash help Amy win. Um, and be sure to check me out on my own personal website, which is, um, you know, Amy, the number four, the people.com. And also on Twitter, you know, Amy, again, the number four, the people. So feel free to uh, follow and like, share, donate and volunteer. All right. And, and we will have all of those links at the bottom uh, in the description of this video. So everybody help out. Uh, check out Amy. Help her out. Uh, she's just, Justice Democrat, Nevada's 4th District. Um, thank you, Amy. It was thank always you. a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. And again, I love the work that you're doing. And uh, you're, you're, you're doing the work of the people, man.